Hi, so today I'm going to talk through the single award science paper and it's unit one, that's the biology section. And this one is the foundation tier paper. 60 marks and one hour long. So here we go. This is, of course, the specimen material that SIA provided. So question one, the diagram below is of a plant cell. And we see the plant cell here. Name the parts labeled A, which is here, and B, which you see is a bit around the outside. So of course, A is the nucleus and B is the cell wall. And you see, because it's the foundation to your paper, you're giving you a list of uh, words that you can choose from. Two marks for that, so one mark for each. So B, the boxes below show the names of some of the parts of an animal uh, cell and their functions. Usually, Use lines to link the parts of the cell to their function. One function will not be used. So the two words are cytoplasm and nucleus, and the, the choices for the functions are contain genetic material, controls what enters and leaves the cell, or where chemical reactions take place. So the cytoplasm has to link to where chemical reactions take place, and then nucleus is contains the genetic material. So you just link them by drawing the lines as you see there. Part C, complete the following sentence about stem cells. Choose from complex, the same type, different types or simple. So a stem cell is a simple cell in animals and plants that can divide to form cells of the same type. Two marks, one for each gap. Question two, respiration is a chemical reaction which releases energy from our food. Uh, specifically glucose there in brackets. Complete the word equation for respiration. Choose from oxygen, water, nitrogen or food. So glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water. They have to be in the correct spaces there. So two marks for both of those. What type of energy is in the food we eat or what type of energy is the food we eat a source of? So of course that is chemical energy. So one mark for that. Then complete the table below. Choose from the energy for energy and insulation, fibre for transport, vitamin C or growth and repair. So we have food group and then function in the body. So the first one we're given the function in the body is prevent scurvy. So of course you know that that is vitamin C. And then the food group, water, and it is for transport around the body. Number three, the diagram shows... Uh, part of the female reproductive system. And if we just have a look at it here, we have the oviduct, the ovary, the uterus, the cervix and the vagina are all labelled. Ignore the blue X's, they'll come up in a second. So then it says on the diagram above, draw the letter X to show where a sperm nucleus fuses with an egg nucleus. So that has to be in an oviduct. So either one of the oviducts, and as long as your X was anywhere along the length of one of the oviducts, then you would have got a mark there. Part two, name the process um, where when a sperm nucleus fuses with an egg nucleus. So that is just one word, fertilization. And then the structure labeled on the diagram where implantation occurs. So after fertilization occurs in one of the uh, oh, one of the oviducts, the egg then, the fertilized egg travels down into the uterus and it embeds in the lining of the uterus. So that's the answer there. After implantation, the placenta develops. Name one substance which passes between the mother and the fetus and explain how the substance is, is exchanged. So you could have had any of these, oxygen, carbon dioxide or urea. And you could have said that uh, the explanation is they're carried to or from the fetus in the blood vessels or the placenta. Or you could have said by the umbilical cord. So one mark for each part, one for the substance and one for the explanation. Then suggest a reason why pregnant women are not recommended to consume alcohol. Well, very simply, it's because alcohol can pass through the placenta. I know you might be tempted there to go into details about how it can be dangerous for the baby and can cause um, you know, all sorts of complications, but it's just the fact that it can pass through the placenta. So now we're on to question four. The diagram shows an immune response by or to infection by a microorganism. So if we look at the separate stages here, stage one, the white blood cell, um, and you can see these bits here being emitted by the white blood cell. Stage two, then we have 
these little microorganisms and you see that those bits are sticking to the microorganisms and then in stage three there's a number of the microorganisms which now are stuck together. So use the diagram above and your knowledge to describe this immune response. So for stage one then that's antibodies um, are being produced and in stage two they are attaching to the antigens on the microbes and then in stage three the microbes are clumping together and are immobilized and killed. So the way that would be scored we have one mark here for saying that the antibodies attach to the antigens on the microbes and the second mark is for the fact that they clump together so that they can then be uh, destroyed. Now name the type of white blood cell which carries out this immune response, that is lymphocyte. Remember there are two types and the lymphocytes are the ones that produce the antibodies. Now, part B of this, the graph shows the percentage of the most common sexually transmitted infections in the UK. So if we look at the graph here, we've got 52% is chlamydia, genital warts 35%, got genital herpes is 8% and syphilis is 1% and then we have this section here which is gonorrhea and it hasn't been um, given a percentage which gives you a clue what's going to happen in the question. So calculate the percentage of sexually transmitted infections caused by gonorrhea and show you're working out. So to do that what you need to do is look at all of the numbers that you're given. So we have and then take them away from 100. So 100 is the total that you would have because it's a percentage. Take away 52 for chlamydia, 35 for the genital warts, 1 for syphilis and 8 for genital herpes. That leaves us with 4 and the answer is 4%. So you're getting one mark for showing how you're working it out and one mark for getting the right answer. Then suggest a way the government could try to reduce the number of people getting sexually transmitted infections. So really, if you're, set, if you're suggesting anything sensible here, you're probably going to get a mark. But the, the big hitters here would be like an education programme to um, help people understand what the risks are, giving out free condoms or you know advertising to make sure that um, people are aware of the risks and um, how to prevent getting STIs in the future. Now we've got um, quite a long passage here. This one is more like a, um, you know, in English when you get a passage and you have to read it and the word escapes me at the minute. But it shows a corn crake and that's this type of bird. Um, you don't really need to know what a corn crake is, but you do need to be able to take the information from the passage and apply it to the questions on the next page. So it says, first of all, the world population of corn crakes has been estimated to be between two to three million pairs. And you'll notice the word pairs there is highlighted or is it in bold. And that is actually important later on. Corn crakes spend the winter in Africa. They migrate northwards to arrive on their breeding grounds in Europe from early April onwards. They live and lay their eggs in long grass and open fields. And adults and young birds return to Africa in August and September. So the bird was once common in Ireland, but in 2005, only 164 singing males were heard in the country. The fall in corn crake numbers in Ireland is mainly due to the earlier cutting of grass fields by farmers. Grass fields are now cut for the first time in May. Large machines attached to tractors are used to cut the grass. So grass fields are usually cut from the outer edges towards the centre of the field. In some areas in Ireland where corn creeks nest, government grants have been given to farmers to cut their fields starting from the centre, going to the outer edges. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of a picture of what this bird does, the sort of activity it's involved in. So, it says use the information in the passage on the previous page and your knowledge to answer the following questions. So what is the maximum estimated number of individual corn crakes in the world? You remember on the previous page, it said two to three million pairs. So the maximum there would be three million pairs. And three million pairs is six million birds. Okay, so I've just written underneath two to three million pairs. And they want the individual birds, so it's six million. Then explain why the corn creek is rarely is a rarely seen bird. And that's it actually gives you a clue. It says line five. So if we go to line five here, it says they live and lay their eggs in long grass in open fields. So my answer there is just they live in long grass. 
then suggest two reasons why the earlier cutting of grass fields leads to a fall in corn creek numbers from lines 7 to 11. So if we look at lines 7 to 11, that's this section here, it says they were once common in Ireland, blah, blah. The fall in numbers is mainly due to the earlier cutting of grass fields by, for by farmers and they're now often cut for the first time in May and large machines uh, attached to tractors are used to cut the grass. So how do we put that into an answer? Well, we can say that the nests or the eggs would be destroyed by that cutting of the, the grass. Um, the food, you could mention, would be destroyed. You could say that maybe the chicks are killed or the adults are killed or they have nowhere to live or it's ruining, I think that should say, the habitat. So ruining the habitat as well. So any... Uh, Two of those would have got you the two marks there in that case. And finally, it says, suggest why the number of corn creeks increase if farmers cut their grass fields from the centre outwards. Just the, the idea here is that they could move out to the edges and survive. So that if you start off cutting in the centre of the field and move out, the corn creeks then can move away from the cutting as it happens and they can escape them and survive. So some way just of describing that. Number six, the hand is placed on a hot iron. The nervous system responded and the muscle in the arm contracted to pull the hand away. This is an example of a reflex action. So then suggest one advantage of a reflex action. You could say it's faster, you could say it's like a, um, a protective response, or you could say that it doesn't involve having to think about it, but just say it's faster is fine. Then using the information above and your knowledge, complete the following flowchart. So we have, I'm going to talk about underneath first. So we have stimulus to receptor to central nervous system, the effector, and then the response. So the stimulus, it tells you, is heat. The receptor is the hand. The central nervous system, because it's a reflex, would be the spinal cord. The effector we're given is the muscle. And then the response is some way of describing that the hand moves away from um, the, the heat, the stimulus, okay? And B, hormones also bring about responses in the body. Two differences between hormones and the nervous system. Well, you could have quite a few here, but simply um, hormones last longer in your system and hormones act more slowly as well. Now, we're like a good graph in biology. So the graph shows the blood glucose levels of two people after a meal, one with diabetes and one without diabetes. You see here this dark line, the solid line is the person with diabetes and the dotted one is the person without diabetes. Straight away from the graph, we can see the person with diabetes, the graph spikes quite high and doesn't come down as low again where the person without diabetes is a gentler um, little peak and then comes down to level fairly quickly. So two differences between the graph for the person with diabetes and the graph for the person without diabetes. So I've said, now any two of these would do, the blood glucose is higher at the start for the diabetic or it rises more steeply for the person with diabetes. Or now these little marks just mean the same again. So the blood glucose falls more slowly for the diabetic person um, or the blood glucose levels do not level off for the diabetic or you could just say that they're overall higher for the diabetic. Any two of those, I don't think you can see there, but there's two marks for that question. Then insulin is the hormone that controls blood glucose levels. Name the part of the body that produces insulin. That's the pancreas. Now we've got this um, little paragraph. The tree preservation orders, or TPO, make it an offence to cut down, top, lop, uproot, willfully damage or destroy any protected trees without first having obtained permission from the Department of the Environment. The table shows the number of tree preservation orders in Northern Ireland since 2004. We've got the years here and then the numbers of trees. And you'll see it started at 40, then 100, 130, then 88, 82, 62, 27 and 20. So next page, you can guess what's coming here because of what I've written there. But it says complete a line graph um, of these results on the grid below. So, um, Plotting those on the graph. Oh, I actually just noticed a mistake there. I'd left out a point. So if we look back here, the previous page. If you had all points correct, you'll get two marks. Only five 
of the six points correct would be one mark and a correct line joining the points is one mark. So of course in biology we join the dots with straight lines. I've tried to do mine as straight as I can as you can see but obviously you would use a pencil and a ruler to do this. So we see here one, two, three, four, five, uh, six the correct points and um or sorry, seven correct points, but if you only had five correct, you would still get one mark. And then a nice line drawn with the ruler, so a total of three marks there. Then calculate the difference in number of tree preservation orders from 2005 to 2010. So in 2005, there were 100, and in 2010, there were 27. So 100 minus 27 is 73, so that's your answer. Part B, tree preservation orders are one example of how the government tries to protect our environment. Suggest one other way in which human activity can have a positive effect on our nature reserves. So just one way, one mark. So you could have said nature reserves, protecting fish stocks, international treaties, or anything about good agricultural practices. Just one of those would get you your mark there. Now we've got a graph showing skin cancer rates in numbers per 100,000 in the UK between 1975 and 2010. So the year across the bottom here, from 75 up to 2010, and the skin cancer rates per 100,000 on the y-axis going up the side there. And you see females as the, uh, the solid line, males as the dotted line. So it says stick to conclusions that can be made from the information provided. So... The first thing you could say is that the number of people with skin cancer has increased. You see the trend here is it's going up. It's increased every year since 1975, or you could say over time. The second thing you could say is, I'm looking at this again, the number for the, the females here, you see is higher than the males. So it's just sort of said the number of females is always higher than males. That's the number of cases in females. And then... You could say that in uh, 2010, here, the number of cases in male and females are the same. Or you could all alternatively say that when the rate of skin cancer rises in females, it also rises in males. So any two there would get you two marks. This table then shows how the age of a mother affects the risk of having a child with Down syndrome. So you can see here from 25 to 50, the age is increasing. And the risk of having a child with Down syndrome also increases from 1 in 1,350 all the way up then to 1 in 10 at the age of 50. So it says a test can be carried out to see if a child has Down syndrome before it's born. However, there's a 1% or 1 in 100 risk of miscarriage or loss of the baby with this test. Using the information provided, explain fully why this test is normally only offered to mothers over the age of 35 and not offered to mothers under 35 years. So you need to be identifying the fact that the, the risk of Down syndrome increases with the age of the mother. So if you're under 35, the risk of miscarriage exceeds the risk of uh, Down syndrome. But if you're over 35 the risk of Down syndrome is greater than the risk of miscarriage. So what that means is if you're testing um, women under the age of 35, they're more likely to miscarry than they are to have Down syndrome. So it's, it's important to get the balance right. So part two, apart from the risk involved, suggests one other factor that may influence a mother's decision whether to take the test or not. So you could, you could mention something about her religion. It could be against her religious beliefs. She may believe that, that you know, she has ethical issues with it, or she could have other children and worry about how it would impact them if she had to care for a child, a child with Down syndrome. And finally, on this page, skin cancer and Down syndrome are both caused by a change to ge genetic material in body cells. Give the name that describes a change to genetic material. So that is mutation. Close to the end here, question nine is one of these long questions. It's a six mark one. And it says, describe the stages a newly developed antibiotic would have to go through before it can be prescribed by doctors. So you, your account should include, it's very important to read this bit when you're answering a long question because it basically tells you what you need to put in to get the marks. So the names of each stage and what's involved, the reasons for each stage and one ethical issue involved. So 
The first stage is in vitro testing. And you could talk about testing in a laboratory or testing on a line of cells or using human cells, but not an actual you know, full organism. And that is to see, does the drug work? So the name of this, the um, test is in vitro testing and it's to see, or the name of the stage is in vitro, and it's to identify, does the drug actually work? Next stage is animal testing. And it's testing on whole body systems before we test on humans. Then the next, uh, or the next stage after that would be clinical trials. And that's when a drug is given to humans. And the reason for that is to see if it works or to see if there are side effects or to ascertain what the correct dosage should be. So that's the names of each stage and what is involved. The reasons for each stage. An ethical issue involved could be that people would be opposed to animal testing for ethical reasons. You would need to explain that, you know, and say why they might be opposed to it. Um, then uh, that you could say that the drugs may have different effects on animals um, than they do on humans because you have um, different species involved. And then the final stage I forgot to mention is that the drug is licensed for use when it's shown to be safe. Or when there, you know, when you can demonstrate that there are few side effects or the side effects are not going to outweigh the good that the drug will actually do. Now, the way that that's marked, you see there, I have six or eight, sorry, little uh, marks circled. So if you got between six and eight of them, you were getting five to six marks. The three to five uh, ticks really is three to four marks and one to two would be one to two marks. Now, the other component of this is it says you'll be assessed on your written communication skills including the use of specialist scientific terms so when answering a question like this in single award it's always a good idea to have you know one you know, to be writing in sentences so to have a full sentence and to full stop capital letter after the sentence and to make sure you're using scientific language where you can but you're actually writing your answer in a flowing style so that it makes sense to the examiner. And if you do that, you would hit the top bracket on each of those uh, marking um, criteria. This, I think, is the final question, number 10. So the graph shows the effect of exercise on the heart rates of three students. We have A, B and C. See here, C stays quite low. B has a spike that comes back quickly and A takes a little bit longer to go back down. So calculate the maximum increase in the heart rate of student A during exercise. So we're looking for the, from the, their resting rate here at 70 to the top of their peak there, which is at 140. So it's coming out at 70. Then the percentage increase in the heart rate of student A during exercise was going from 70 up to 140. So that's 100% because it's doubled. So 70 there to 140 is doubling, so 100% increase. Then use the graph, using the graph above, identify the student A, B or C, who is the fittest. So that would be C, as we saw earlier. It's the lowest one and it comes back um, down to normal, the fastest. So that's what we're gonna give for the explanation. The heart rate rises less or it, or it turns to normal, the fastest. Finally, it says exercise helps prevent heart disease. Describe and explain how heart disease can affect the wider family. So describe and explain means you have two parts to the question. Now, this is just an example of how you could answer this because there'd be lots of appropriate answers here. But you could say that if you have heart disease, you would have long periods ill or off work. So and that's usually like the parents or maybe a father because men are more likely to have heart disease. So your explanation is no one would be there to look after the children. So that's how it could affect the wider family. Okay, so that is all of the foundation tier. Um, have a look at the higher tier as well if you'd like to see the style of questions in it. Thanks for watching.